In this video, we're going to talk about the expectation versus the reality of a graduate engineer. Keep watching for more details. Hey guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your host, Jess Skerek, with another useful and important video. This is all about the graduate jobs. What is the reality against the expectations? Both are a question about the graduate jobs, kidney uh, experience, whether you're going to get a graduate job or not, how much experience, the training you need before you go to graduate jobs. So, yes, sir, a question about the graduate jobs. I need to make sure you understand yeah, the difference between reality and what you are thinking about, yeah, about the graduate jobs. So, let's get started. In the UK, the graduate jobs is per the name yeah, specified for the graduates or whoever completed their studies and they graduate from the uni, they apply for these graduate jobs. It's always a positive if you have a placement year or some voluntary work in the background that will have a positive impact on when it comes to interview. Certainly to apply for the graduate, you don't need to have a certain level of uh, years of experience to apply for these jobs. So as long as you have the knowledge, uh, you have the education of what is required to apply for those jobs, that is good enough to apply for the graduate jobs. Uh, what are the training you need, uh, whatever is relevant to your course, obviously that, that will be taught in your course there if you have any software skills, any soft skills or any uh, sort of your computational skills uh, that will be taught in your course that will, you need the knowledge of that to be applied in your scope, in your field and that's exactly what the employees is, is asking for. So in fact yeah, in the UK we generally uh, specify the competency in three levels K, E, A. So K is for knowledge, E is for experience, A is for ability. So what, what are the difference between the three? So the knowledge of which you get basically from your studies. So that's all you need for the graduate job. So you need the knowledge of your theory. What's, what's the theory behind? I mean, when you apply for the job, that's all you need for to apply for the graduate job. The E comes, yeah, experience comes with the time when you join a job and you basically do work, apply that theory to your practical job and you need some sort of supervision to apply and basically apply that, that sciences to, to the practical problem solution. Uh, that's where experience and that you will gain with, with the time. The ability comes when you are at that stage, at the supervision stage, that you can apply or some sort of yeah, beyond your uh, the standards and good practices you apply those to the to the jobs and uh, for the ben benefit or for the implementation of the environmental and all the sustainability comes around there so when you think beyond the box that's that's where the ability comes in uh, so these are the different uh, types of your yeah, competencies that you you're being engaged against so for the graduate job all, all you need is the knowledge which comes from the universities as long you have that knowledge you can apply those knowledge into your practical life and that's that's all the uh, employers is, is expected from yourselves so nothing beyond that as long you have that knowledge and uh, you have the competency in that sort of sense then it's, it's good enough to apply for the graduate job So what is the expectation and what is the reality? So in your mind, you have a big sort of yeah, uh, expectation that, that when you apply for the job, that will require such and such sort of experience there, even if you go for the graduate job. The reality is all you need is your uh, knowledge of your theory, what you study in your degree. That's all you need to know. So as long as you have the good grip on that sort of theory, uh, so you can implement or apply in your practical job, that is the reality. You're gonna be asked about the, all the different sort of calls, the standards and design, how to design a bridge or building. That isn't the case. The reality is you will be part of the team and uh, you will basically progress uh, with, with the time. Uh, so when you join as a graduate, uh, as a graduate engineer, uh, you will be uh, expected to be part of the team Team, you will have a mentor there you will be under the mentorship and you will progress your your knowledge you will apply your knowledge what you gain from the university into the practical life and obviously that's that's all the bending moment share forces comes along yeah if you are a civil engineer so you will apply those in the practical circumstances there and that's how you progress to the next stage so it won't be as a full-fledged yeah, design this bridge it won't be the case so you will be part of the team you may be given yeah, a beam there 
design that beam these are the loadings which come from another team so they will provide you the loading and you will ask to design the beam only and then you basically coordinate your stuff your elements with other teams so that's where the coordination comes in as well communication coordination so you enforce the other those sort of abilities of yourselves as well there so it's always a teamwork there the next expectation what is the training the CSCS cars we need I mean to to go for the jobs you don't need any competency any at the start at the graduate level uh, the CSCS cars just wanted to clarify about this ones it's not mandatory uh, the, the employer does ask yeah, but depending on the different sort of projects so in building construction size generally they will require you CSCS card but in other sort of you know, like if you're working in the railway industry in the civil works you don't need a CSCS card so they have their own competencies there like a PTS person track safety so it, it, you don't need to do any competency beforehand obviously if you're keen uh, you, it, there's no restriction you can do that, that there's, there's no harm in doing some more sort of your yeah, research or training there uh, there's no harm on that one, but as such what the employer needs what the employer required it, they don't require any CSCS from yourself from the very beginning obviously if you're going for the graduate job uh, so all you need is your to, to know the knowledge of that, that that's a good enough yeah, to go for your graduate job but in terms of yeah the what is the employer expectation for the CSCS card they don't ask you for the CSCS card if the job required the CSCS card the the company the employer they will provide you all the training and you will go through the assessment there and you will get the CS card ultimately if, if that is required by the job so you don't need beforehand any training as long as yeah, the, uh, the company or the employer or the job requirements are so you will go through that training there the next expectation is whether you're going to do the project management, the construction management, the structure engineering and the different types of software so that, that is the expectation. The reality is you only can excel in one field either in the BIM like in specific softwares or structure engineer or construction management use or either project manager so you need to be very specific here so you the the employer don't expect you to be masters of all they don't expect you to have all those expertise in your sauce at the start of your career even after you have 15 years of experience of myself I don't consider myself to be experts in any of other fields apart from civil engineering or construction which apart from these two even after 15 16 years experience i don't consider myself as competent in any of other sort of yeah uh, civil engineering let like structure engineering or the uh, although i have the knowledge there but i don't consider myself of any expertise there but the reality is the employer doesn't expect you to have expertise in all different fields of your civil engineering I hope this uh, clarifies your doubts there. If you still got any question, do use the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer your queries there. Thank you very much.